Well, it's a bit hard to know what to ask the, uh, a member of the reigning champs, but um, how are you avoiding the hangover, I suppose, is the obvious one. What, what steps have you taken to ensure that the, the motivation is still there? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good way to start. I guess for us, it's about understanding what we, we've done in the past, but coming back with a mentality to continue to improve. And that's on all levels, coaches, players, all, all, all the staff around the footy club. And that's something we've, we've noticed from day one through our actions and our language around how we can improve this footy club to, to do what we did in 2021, but on another level and uh, against different challenges throughout this, the season. Alex, have you identified areas that you can get better in? I mean, it's almost sounds silly to say, but how can you improve in 2022? Yeah, well, no doubt. Everyone right now is at the starting line uh, preparing for 2022. So for us, it's about bringing the, the new people in the footy club, um, what, what we stand for, letting them understand what the Melbourne Footy Club is about, how we go about our business, and also areas of our game plan. Uh, we feel like we've got a good handle on what we're good at, but we want to take that to another level. So this is what January is for, being able to train those habits, the behaviours out on the field, and then that stands up in big moments. And all we're looking at right now is preparing ourselves for round one. Has the program changed since Darren Burgess left in terms of pre-season? Uh, not, not really. So Selwyn, uh, they got very similar mindsets around how to get their group um, as fit as they can. And Sel was here last year. So it's been a seamless transition and we've got full confidence in what he brings to the club and he's got a great supporting team now. So it's been really enjoyable and it's, it's always nice having fresh ears, um, fresh, a fresh voice around the footy club and the boys have grasped that really well. Can you tell us about those heel sessions on Saturday mornings? I know they were a feature of Darren's time here. What are they like? Yeah, they're good. It's a good way to, well, one, bring family and the partners and the kids to a training session because it's not so formal. They're able to come down on a Saturday morning, have a coffee, have some brekkie afterwards. And then with them, they're just high intensity efforts, I guess, to build the, the muscle endurance. And also uh, it's, it's a good way to make sure your weekends aren't as long and you're, you're always that 24 seven athlete. So, what have the standings been like when, since you've been back? What have you seen? You've been impressed by the hunger and um, the drive from the players. Yeah, definitely. And that's something that it's always going to be a challenge for a successful organisation in any, any sport. but. The, the way we've, we've led with our actions, um, coming back from Christmas, uh, uh, many boys were, were running PBs and then also the language that we're using, there's a desire to be a great Melbourne team and that's something we've got front of mind is to be the next greatest Melbourne team and it's going to be a hard challenge but it's one where we're willing to step in, in front of. Do you look back at the, in, say the last 20 years, the Lions teams, the Hawks teams and, and to an extent Geelong, the way they've been able to stay at the top to be successful is there anything you can take from what teams previously have done yeah and oh, i look at those those generations of the brisbane teams and then you go probably for the hawthorne geelong and now the richmond sides one thing they all did is they respected the game and how hard it is each year and that's something that you have to have a real balance with is coming into a new season understanding like i touched on before everyone is at the start line there's no one with a head start and you've really got to make the early part of the season worth it and then for us we're just going to try attack that and give ourselves the best opportunity to be there later on in the year. How's Adam Tomlinson for tracking? Obviously one that missed out last year, pretty heartbreaking circumstances. Where's he at? Yeah, Adzi's he's been tremendous. Uh, I've never seen him as fit as he is at the moment and he's been able to transfer that onto the field with how he's going in the one-on-ones against the key forwards. Um, he brings a great energy to the group. He's got a level head. Um, I, in my opinion, he's a, a future coach. He's, he reads the game really well and then He's got a great support network. Harrison Petty's standing up again. Uh, there's, a, there's probably that, that young bunch from about 23 to, to 25 years old who are very hungry and they are driving, driving the group as well. So we've got a great balance, our alignment from the leadership group down to the middle tier and to the younger boys too. Has the group been affected by COVID much? Any of the boys get it? Yeah, we, we, we've definitely been affected. Um, from now on though, it's just going to be something we live with and I, I'm sure the AFL and the, the footy clubs are going through what that looks like for the season. But yeah, like every other club, we've had uh, people affected. Yeah, and so is it sort of change your mindset on any precautions or, or how you deal? Or you just... Yeah, it's just very similar to what everyone else is living with. Um, as an athlete, I, I prepare myself to be in the best physical shape. Um, and then if something does happen with COVID, you, you hope you can rebound and um, not too, miss too much football because at the end of the day, we're here to perform at the highest level and I want to make sure I give myself the best opportunity to do so. The AFL is apparently you know, making plans about how perhaps to deal with it this season. What about the, the idea of top-up players being used as has been done in other sports? Would, that, that, I reckon that'd be a hard one for you guys to get your 
heads around, wouldn't it? Yeah, it, it would be interesting having a, a fresh player come into the, the system. I think if yeah, you align it with people who understand the footy club or even players that have been here before, I've got a few mates who have been delisted or retired. Um, I'd love to see them get another opportunity, but it's something that the AFL will control. We, we're just sitting here preparing for our season and that's a decision that they will make for sure. Tell us about Luke Dutson. He was a bit of a surprise delisting given how well he played in the second half of last season. What's he, what's he brought? Does he look like someone who'd come in around one? Or? Yeah, well, I, I played a lot of footy with him as a junior. We're both from Adelaide, and uh, yeah, he, he's brutal in the contest. Uh, we, we like to think we're a branded a contest side, and he fits that for us. That model of how we play our footy, um, he's a great pickup, and he's got a really good head on his shoulders. Someone who I feel like has a huge leadership capacity in this footy club, and someone who I can't wait to play with this year, definitely. Just ready, ready for teams to, to come for you this year at times, Alex, now that you're the benchmark? Yeah, it's something going back to the convo before about the teams who we've looked up to, um, who have had successful times throughout the AFL. We are now a team that have had success, so teams will definitely look at coming at us. Um, it's something we're going to have to balance, understanding that teams will come wanting to hunt us, and we've just got to be able to be prepared for that. And that's what we do here in January, is prepare for all scenarios and give ourselves the best shot to perform uh, early on in the season. Sorry, Rob, I can't Oh, just on that idea of becoming the next great Melbourne team. So that's, is that the aim now? You know, we've, we've, we've won one, but we've got a few more in us and that's how you'll be? Yeah, right. absolutely, yeah. There's no way I'm sitting here now um, having a, one good season from a footy perspective. Um, I'm a competitor. We're all competitors out here. and while the, the time in the game is short, uh, you want to make the most of it. We had Geordie Lewis who came across from Hawthorne. He'd won a few flags and he came here at the end of his career, still hungry as ever. And now that's something as, as I'm here as a 26 year old, uh, I want to make sure however long I'm in the game for, I leave this footy club um, in a great spot and the next generation of the Pickets, the, Jackson, the Jacksons and the Rivers can continue to take this footy club forward and be a great club for a long time. You mentioned Rivers then, he came and really lit up last year. Can you see anyone else from outside the 22 on Grand Final Day that could come in and have an impact this year? Um, oh, there, there's that, yeah, there's that generation. I'll give you, J James Jordan. Uh, I know he was, he was the 23rd man on Grand Final Day, but the way he handled that moment um, and then the way he's come back, him, Tom Sparrow, there's, a, there's that, that partnership there, which is going to be very dangerous going forward. And it's something I'm excited. I look at those guys as inspiration as well. So. Yeah, that, that generation, young generation, have a lot of power within this group.